Okay, what we've got in front of us here is a document which on the um, pcteach.me website you should be able to obtain the file. Um, you don't need it, you can just type in any um, sort of text. I've just put it on there to save you um, having to do those steps. Um, this is going to be in the format more of a, um, a document where I want a series of different titles to appear. Also, in a lot of um, manuals and so forth you will come across, you'll see there's a table of contents which will then take you to those particular pages. So I'm going to show you how this is all done and again f following from the previous video about styles it, it's all based on that. So what I'm going to do is um, I've got this title of table of contents but I'm just going to go to the end of it and press enter and go on to the next line and I'm going to type in the words introduction. Uh, I'm not bothered too much about the spelling. However, whilst I'm still on that line, you can highlight, but as long as you're on that line, just go over to the top and choose Heading 1. Okay, so now that should have changed the look of it. Um, so on previous versions of Word, you should see a drop-down box where it says Normal. You would need to click on there and choose Heading 1. Now, what I'd like you to do is go down a few paragraphs, if not another page. It doesn't matter where. And just go to the end of one of the paragraphs and press Enter. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put in um, the heading um, details. And this is going to be heading 2. Again, on the drop down box where it will say normal, you need to choose heading 2 from that list. And if I scroll down again, go a bit further down, I want you just to go somewhere else. I'm going to go several pages down actually. And then again, go to the end of the paragraph, press enter and type in summary. This time, choose Heading 3 from that drop-down list. And that'll do to start with. So what have we got? Well, we've got this summary. We've got the details title. And also, we've got the introduction at the top. So now we've used these heading styles. This is really, really helpful now because we can create and generate a table of contents purely by just using those styles alone. So if you go back up to the top, so control home, just to get up to the top again, go to the end of the heading of table of contents. I do not want you to put a style onto it. I'll explain why in a, in a while. Just leave it on normal and just press enter to go on to the next line down. So now we've got this new paragraph, what I want you to do is insert now a table of contents. Now in 2007, now we've got this lovely ribbon bar, which I personally do not subscribe to. Um, it's a little bit different to um, earlier versions. If you're on um, earlier versions of um, Word, other than 2009, you will go into the insert menu and you should see a section called cross references. In our case, in 2007, um, it's in the reference section and what we have is an option in there which should say table of contents so on either version as long as you've got to the um, the references section just click on to table of contents and as a result what should happen is it will bring up a dialog box giving you a choice of different styles now any of those sort of styles that you can see um, on screen will be fine I'm just going to choose the first one which is there and click on it and as a result, you should now see that it's immediately put in, and also in my example, in hi hierarchical order, the actual structure of my headings. So we've learned something there. We've learned that the heading styles of heading 1, 2, 3 are actually parent-child hierarchies, i.e. heading 1's king of the castle, heading 2 is the child of heading 1, and heading 3 is the child of heading 2, and etc, etc. I believe there's up to nine heading styles available to you, which should be more than enough for you to actually create quite a detailed structure. So what we're going to do is we're going to just flesh this out a little bit more. So I'm going to go underneath introduction and I'm just going to, as long as I stay under introduction, I'm going to go to a end of another paragraph, press enter, and I'm going to put in um, another bit of text here, which is going to be um, um, hello as a title, not that you would probably want that. I'm going to go back onto the drop down box of styles and choose heading 2. And I'm going to go down a little bit further. Um, there's details, which is our other heading. If you're not sure which heading's which, just click on the word of the, of the title and it should highlight it what heading it is. So I'm going to go underneath here and put in another one um, called um, test. And I'm going to make that a heading 3. 
And now with that done, I'm going to go back up to the top again. Again, control home, keyboard shortcut. And as you can see, the contents has not changed. But that's there's no, no worry with that. All you've got to do is just click on it once and you'll notice it all goes grey. In Word, when you see grey, it indicates that it's a field. And if it's a field, you do not type into it because it will get overwritten. So you could carry on typing like that, but as soon as you update the table of contents, that text you've typed will be overwritten. Because at the end of the day, each one of these sections here is actually referring to a piece of text in the document. So if you wanted to change the title, you obviously must go to where you typed it in. So back on the table of contents, as long as you've got it selected, just right click with the mouse button and you should see an option update field. So just click on that. And do you want to just update page numbers only and entire table? You may think, well, why just not update the entire table? Well, if your document is say 5,000 sorry 500 to a thousand pages in, in length updating the entire table may take about 10 minutes so you may have to go away have a cup of coffee and come back whereas update page numbers is just telling word that none of the titles have changed but their page positions may have adjusted and um, what we're going to do is we'll just say entire table because we have now added new titles to this document so if you click on OK lo and behold there's our new structure now, in subsequent videos, we're going to talk about these um, heading styles in a bit more detail, specifically because you may decide that this summary section should not be part of the details topics. It should be on the same level as introduction. Now, we can do that quite quickly by going on to the summary line and changing it. I'm just going to do control click to go there. We're on heading three. If I click on to heading one, and then just do control home right click again and update the field of the table of contents you'll see that once i've done the entire table it's repositioned it to the to, to the outside however if you've got a large amount of text this is not the best way of going where you have to go line by line selecting it there is actually a better view available to you so if large documentation is what you're inspiring to use word for i strongly recommend you look at the next video on this series which is going to discuss about outlining so with that done, we've just clearly defined for ourselves on this video how heading styles work and what are their purpose. Their purpose is basically a way of pigeonhole information where you can then use it on tables of contents for quick referencing. Um, this is not the end of the, um, the, the attributes of uh, heading styles. However, this is definitely the start. So subsequent videos, we will expand on what we've learned here. Thanks.